Hey everybody, so just wanted to do a quick demo on how to use data sockets in LabVIEW. So data sockets is a cool way you can share data between LabVIEW VIs, between different LabVIEW applications, or between LabVIEW and non-LabVIEW applications, either across, uh, you know, locally on a machine, um, across the network, even across the internet. Um, so um, yeah, just wanted to highlight how we can do this. Um, first thing, if on your computer you're wanting to actually have your PC be the data socket server, um, if you install LabVIEW, you also get this data socket server. So if you just run that, um, this will launch the local data socket server, um, and you can see here, you know, what's running on it and whatnot. Um, in your LabVIEW VIs, if you go to data communication, um, there's this data socket palette, um, and there's just a couple functions. It's pretty simple. Um, so, uh, just a quick demo. We're going to need an open, close, read, and then over here, we're going to need an open, close, and write. Okay, um, so from there, we just want to wire up the references and we'll connect the errors as well. Um, so on our um, uh, open functions, we need to pass in a URL. So the URL for data sockets is going to be DSTP colon slash slash. The next uh, part of this URL is going to be the host name or IP address of where you're trying to connect. Um, so since our data socket server is running locally, um, we can just use localhost. Um, if you were connecting to another computer across the network or across the internet, you can use the URL or DNS name or IP address of whatever that is. Um, and then we're going to do another backslash and here's where we're actually going to create a name for that data on that data socket. Um, so we're just gonna call this data. Um, from here, uh, we also need to define the mode for just you know this instance of connecting to the data socket. So we either have a read, write, a both read and write, or being able to do buffered reads and buffered read writes. Um, for this simple example, we're just gonna mess with read and write. So we want this one to read, um, the only other um, thing we really need to do is just write the data to the data socket. Um, so we're going to put a little loop around here, create a control to, oops, to stop the loop. We're going to just add a little bit of timing. So let's say right every 200 milliseconds. And then we're just going to use a random number, and that's what we're going to write to our data socket. So the, one of the cool things with data sockets is that you don't actually need to be doing any flattening of the data types. Um, like if you were using the LabVIEW TCP functions or UDP, um, you know, you have to flatten everything to a string prior to sending it. And when you receive it, you need to unflatten it from a string. Um, data sockets allow you to send just native LabVIEW data types and um, that's kind of handled automatically for you. Um, so yeah, this is all you really need to just write data to this data socket over and over again. So we can run this guy and you can see the process connected to the server. Um, and you can see that packets are being sent to the data socket server. So now we want to set up a reader to read that data off of that data socket using LabVIEW. Um, so we're going to also need to connect the URL. So same thing. It's going to be DSTTP, DSTP colon slash slash the location of the data socket server and the name of the data you're reading. Um, we also have to define the scope here. So here we want to read. Um, and then on the read function, we have to define the data type we want to read this data back in. Um, so in this case, we're using just like a double floating point. So we need to tell it that's the type of the data for this. Um, and now it, it's, it's automatically adjusted um, to output using that data type. So let's 
um, move this over just a hair. We're gonna put a loop around here. Um, sweet, a control here. And we're going to add a weight here. Oops. Okay. So we're also just going to read every 200 milliseconds. So one of the things you can do on the read is there is this wait for updated value, which means this is going to wait until either your millisecond timeout has occurred or you have a new value on this data socket. Um, so we're just gonna leave that by default. You also get the latest timestamp of that data socket, so when it was last updated from the writer, um, and you can get the status and quality. N not gonna focus too much on that, really just want to um, display this data. So we've got this set up, we can open this, and we can see the data coming in from our data socket just fine. So this is writing data to this data socket, this is reading data from this data socket. Um, just wanted to highlight one other kind of cool thing you can do with data sockets. Um, so if I create another VI um, and I drop a numeric indicator on this VI, um, I can go to the properties of the VI of the indicator and go to data binding, and I can actually bind this to my data socket. Um, so. You can also define scope here. So if you have a control, you can actually use these. So when you update the control, it automatically updates the data socket. Um, for our instance, we're gonna do just read only. Um, and same thing, just need to add that uh, URL to our data socket, and just like that. And you also get this little um, indicator next to your control that will show whether you're connected or not to the data socket. So your VI will have to be running for it to connect. So we're just gonna add a simple while loop and an event structure there. And um, create some shutdown code. Okay, so now if I run this VI, you can see this light goes green because we're now connected to our data socket and this is automatically updating as the data socket gets updated um, so no not actually doing any programming here it's just automatically um, connecting to it um, and that's really it to use data sockets um, in lab view